Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center, speaking to you today about multiple sclerosis and the MRI. Specifically, I want to describe for you what we mean when we say that there's new MS activity. I'm talking about uh, when you get a follow-up MRI and it's compared to the last one, and we say, oh no, we see new activity. What exactly does that mean? We've taken a couple slices of MRIs from our patients and de-identified them, and I'm going to show them to you as examples. So let's do that now. Here we see examples of T1 contrast-enhancing lesions, or gadolinium-enhancing lesions. Gadolinium is a chelating agent, which is injected into the vein partway through the MRI. What it does is light up the blood vessels so we can see them. But because of the blood-brain barrier, the dye stays in the blood vessels and doesn't leave. However, with an acute new MS lesion, the barrier, the blood-brain barrier, becomes irritated and the dye can leak out into the brain tissue. Keep in mind that the dye only leaks out, like you see in these pictures, for two to maybe up to four weeks. So when you see a contrast-enhancing lesion, you're looking at a new lesion right now. The second type of inflammatory lesion is called a T2 bright spot, or a T2 hyperintensity. It has nothing to do with the dye. It's the result of inflammation leaving a small pool of water which shows up as bright on the T2 scan sequence. This uh, is, doesn't tell us anything about the time. When you see a new or enlarged bright spot, it could have occurred the day after your last MRI or the day that you were having the scan. It doesn't tell you about the timing of the spot the way that contrast does. It tells you about the location. Let's take a look at a couple examples. The second kind of inflammatory lesion that we'll discuss today is a T2 bright spot or a T2 hyperintense lesion. These typically occur in the setting of MS in four locations, which I'll show you uh, with these MRIs. Here you see a periventricular lesion. Periventricular lesions touch the ventricle. The ventricle is that black stuff in the middle, and a periventricular lesion must be touching it in order to be called that. The second example is juxtacortical. Juxtacortical means the lesion is located right at the junction between the gray matter, the bark on the outside of the brain, and the white matter underneath. Another location for MST2 bright lesions is infratentorially meaning in the brainstem. Here you see two examples of brainstem lesions. A fourth common location for new MS lesions is in the spinal cord, as you see here on these two MRIs. The presence of a contrast-enhancing lesion, or a new or enlarged T2 lesion, is very concerning. If a person with MS is taking a disease-modifying therapy, and on a follow-up MRI is found to have a contrast-enhancing lesion or a new or enlarged T2 lesion, we call that breakthrough disease activity, meaning that the MS has broken through the attempt of the disease-modifying therapy to keep that hold it at bay. There you have it. Thank you for listening in as I talked about multiple sclerosis in the MRI, discussing in specific activity on the MRI. If you like this video and would enjoy seeing more content, please subscribe to our channel. And please include your questions and comments below. Thank you. Have a great day.